I'm Augie Galindo. I'm one of the owners of Testosterone Centers of Texas. So yes, uh, most people don't think of estrogen as being a male hormone, but it does play a very critical role. This is something that, like any other hormone, you want to keep balanced. In the face of testosterone replacement, we're usually finding that number going up, but you can also run into problems with that number being too low. So any sex hormone, whether it's testosterone or estrogen, should be present in both men and women. It's just the balance that is different. So what that means is, with testosterone, once we use exogenous testosterone to raise your levels, we know that it's going to be aromatized. Testosterone will become estradiol. Not all of it, but some of it will. And we want to manage that movement. We want to make sure that we're not pushing that too high, but we also want to make sure that we're not over-treating it and letting it go too low. Uh, estrogen just plays a critical role in, in a lot of different things in our body so that it's not just the female hormone. The kind of symptoms we see in men with high estrogen have uh, a myriad effect. So you're gonna have, first of all, I'd say fluid retention is probably the most common. With fluid retention, you will get bloating and then of course weight gain. You can also see irritability. Mood swings can happen on both sides, whether estrogen's high or low, but when it's high, it's usually that irritability that you see. And then of course you can have breast tissue development um, that usually starts with cursory symptoms like nipple sensitivity, but then can grow into actual growth of breast tissue, and that's called gynecomastia. That can be essentially irreversible or need surgical intervention to manage. So we wanna stay far away from those things. Ultimately, when, when people think about testosterone and they've not done much study into it, they immediately go to anabolic steroids and their abuse, and they think of steroids and roid rage. Honestly, most of what you see there has really nothing to do with the testosterone levels. It's the estrogen levels that are usually unmitigated with somebody who is abusing anabolics. And so a really high estrogen level in somebody who's already potentially tilted toward the aggressive side can be that much worse. So it's a big bit tongue in cheek, but what I tell people is uh, quite literally, roid rage is PMS on steroids, that high push you get with estrogen in the middle of, of a menstrual cycle or the, when estrogen becomes dominant at the end of a woman's menstrual cycle. It's that irritability that you feel with it that is hormonal, uh, that is then transferred into an exponential degree when men's bodies who are not, that are not um, equipped to handle such high estrogen levels have to deal with that. And so that's where that irritability all the way up to rage can come in. For men with low estrogen levels, this is something we don't really run into a lot with testosterone replacement unless we are over treating the problem. So we use aromatase inhibitors to block aromatase. This, this somewhat surgically or sniper-like will limit the amount of testosterone that's being converted to estradiol. So again, we don't want to knock this out, but we don't want to let it run rampant. However, if we are too aggressive, with managing that with those aromatase inhibitors, then that can push your estrogen level down too low. If it's too low at baseline, then we can just use testosterone replacement therapy to allow that to return to normal. And then again, just be careful with the way that we mitigate the issue of aromatization, properly dosing the anastrozole. The relationship between fat and estrogen is something that is going to be most problematic for somebody who's not on therapy, but adipose tissues is, or rather adipose tissue is where a lot of aromatization takes place. So this is a, a bigger converter, if you will, of testosterone to estrogen. So you take the same sized individual, but one with 10, 15% more body weight, theoretically the person with 10 to 15% more body rate, body weight rather, uh, is going to, if it's fat mass, is going to produce more estrogen than the next guy. There will be more of that testosterone that's converted estradiol, and then you start having the effects of hyperestrogenism or estrogen dominance in that particular patient. The main risk of chronic high estrogen has to do with that gynecomastia, mainly because it is the one that is 
it can lead to something irreversible. Once breast tissue in a male that is normally dormant and non-stimulated becomes stimulated, let's say it starts at a dormant zero and you have a problem with mismanaged or maybe self-managed testosterone replacement and your estrogen levels go too high, then it can actually stimulate that breast tissue to grow. Let's say on a scale of one to 10, it jumps up to a four or five, and now you have a palpable or, or, or a feelable nodule under your, your nipple around the areola that's usually where these develop, and then you correct the problem, bring the estrogen levels down. From there forward, you maintain estrogen levels in a normal state, but that tissue doesn't go back to zero. Now it's at a one or a two, or maybe even worse. It can become very sensitive, even painful, and so then the fix becomes surgery. You actually have to have plastic surgery to remove that excess breast tissue. So that would be the main risk with high estrogen. The treatments that are available for high, est high estrogen, the one that we rely on the most is the use of oral aromatase inhibitors. The drug that we use is Arimidex, that's the name brand, or the generic is Anastrozole. And so it is a, uh, a way to, again, take that link out of the chain so that we allow testosterone to be converted to estradiol through most of the week, but we, at times when testosterone levels are at their highest, we choose to put a, a pause in there so that we can maintain that proper level throughout the week and we're not dealing with the high estrogen levels. So conversely, the risks of chronic low estrogen primarily have to do with osteoporosis. If you have not enough, rather if you don't have enough estrogen in your body, then you're going to start to leach certain minerals out of your bones, so they become porous, they become weak. You can have things all the way up to what are called pathological fractures, things that uh, will break a bone that shouldn't break a bone, normal stress, and, and because of the demineralization of that bone uh, can lead to a, a fracture or a break. Uh, but in addition to that, the other symptoms that you might see that usually are, are uh, seen far before anything as serious as osteoporosis, uh, would be hot flashes. Um, this is something we're very uh, used to coupling with menopause. When women go through menopause and their estrogen levels are dead, they have hot flashes that are more at risk for, with oste for osteoporosis. And so this is what you can see when somebody's estrogen level, a male uh, has an estrogen level that's chronically too low. Um, occasionally I will have some patients that also complain of kind of dry joint aches. Um, it, it's basically a a function of the fact that your water balance is going to be affected by estrogen. So if high estrogen levels equal fluid retention, then severely low estrogen levels can lead to a, a relative dehydration, and so that can lead to some dry joint ache as well. The treatments that are available for low estrogen in men, uh, this is typically just handled through testosterone replacement for what we do. While you could use some other supplement of estrogen, whether that be a topical or oral medication, what we find is that if somebody's on testosterone, they have enough testosterone to convert. We just need to be careful to not block that conversion too aggressively if they are suffering with low estrogen levels. I am Augie Galindo. I'm one of the owners of Testosterone Centers of Texas. Thank you for listening and watching. And if you would like to learn more, go to tctmed.com.